Hi friends, I am so glad to be back with you this week as we continue our study of women artists during Women's History Month. This week we are going to study probably the most famous American woman artist. Her name was Georgia O'Keeffe. She was born in 1887 and she lived to be 98 years old. She started painting when she was really young and painted all the way up until a couple of weeks before she passed away. We're gonna look at some pictures of her and some pictures of her art to learn more about her. This is Georgia O'Keeffe. She looks like a serious artist, doesn't she? Well, Georgia O'Keeffe was known for painting vibrant landscapes, usually of the Southwest in the state of New Mexico. She also loved to paint skulls. She thought that they were beautiful and not scary, but she's most famous for painting flowers, painting little flowers, but making them huge. And sometimes she painted landscape skulls and flowers all together. But the thing that Georgia O'Keeffe is most known for was observing close up the beauty of flowers. She could be found in her garden or in the wild, looking at all of the details of the flowers that grew around her. So I went into my yard and took some up close pictures of the flowers that grow there. Sometimes we just say, hey, that's a white flower, but we don't notice the green and yellow and orange centers. Even the tiny blooms on a strawberry plant are so fascinating. Look at the little tiny yellow circles surrounding the big yellow circle in the middle. This flower is called a calendula. And guess what? You can eat it. Look at all of the different shades of yellow and orange in those petals. My favorite flowers are poppies. This one is a California poppy. It's pretty simple. But look how interesting it looks before it blooms. It's pink and green and it has stripes and a tutu around its waist. My very favorite flowers are Icelandic poppies. Look at how they're wrinkly and look at the detail on the inside. All of those little tiny yellow ovals, there's like a little yellow flower inside of the poppy. Even in a yellow poppy, there's almost this neon green center with another flower exploding from within. They're even interesting to look at before they bloom. It almost looks like an alien creature. Well, it turns out that Georgia O'Keeffe had an obsession with poppies too. And these are some of her most famous paintings. She painted oriental poppies. My poppies are Icelandic poppies but we are going to create a Georgia O'Keeffe poppy painting today, just like this one. Now we don't have oil paints on hand, but we're gonna use some fun techniques to create a poppy very similar to Georgia O'Keeffe's. It might look complicated, but I'm going to break it down into seven easy steps, and we are going to draw this poppy together. All right, are you ready to paint a poppy? We're going to do something fun today. We're going to combine a couple of different techniques to create our poppy painting. And we're going to do this so that we get that cool crinkly look, some variety of color and texture. We're going to have a lot of fun doing it. So you need to go gather your supplies if you don't have them already. You will need five oil pastels red, orange, yellow, green, and black. You will need three markers, red, orange, and blue. And you will need a paintbrush. Your watercolor paintbrush would be best. And a little cup or jar of water. All right, go grab your supplies and come back and let's paint poppies together. Okay, let's take a look at our project here. We are going to create, we're going to create this great big poppy, just like Georgia O'Keeffe's. 
that covers almost our entire paper. We're gonna get these neat different, uh, there's like texture. See, remember when we looked at the poppies, how the leaves were all crinkly? They were reds and oranges and pinks. So we're gonna create something that looks like this with a really lovely blue background. And it looks like we've painted it, but we're gonna use a technique that we used several months ago where we use markers for paint. Our first step is going to be to draw our poppy. Then we're gonna do some funny scribble coloring, and then we're gonna paint at the very end. I told you that I've divided this project in, into seven easy steps to draw it and so we're going to be brave today and just draw with our oil pastel. We're not going to use a pencil and an eraser. If we make something that we don't love we're just going to say that's going to be awesome. We're not going to worry about it. We're just going to go for it with our oil pastels. So the first thing I want you to do is grab your red oil pastel and we're going to draw the whole thing in red first. Then we're going to come back and add our black and our orange and our yellow, um, and I'll show you how to do that. But we're gonna follow the steps that I've sketched out right here. We're gonna start in the middle by drawing the shape of the center. Now, if you look at a poppy from overhead, the center is usually a circle, but the way that the leaves cover, the petals cover that center, it looks more like an ice cream cone, doesn't it? So with our invisible drawing tool, with our finger, we're gonna draw a bit of a big, wide ice cream cone right in the middle of our paper. Our paper is horizontal or landscape, and right in the middle, we want to imagine something that looks like an ice cream cone, or even better, a snow cone. Imagine a snow cone right in the middle of your paper. Then go ahead and we're gonna make a wiggly snow cone. So pretend like you're holding your hand like this while you're holding your snow cone. And we're going to do just a wiggly snow cone, just like that. That will give us the shape of our center of our flower. Then the next thing we're going to do is draw these two petals. They kind of look like skinny butterfly wings. So starting on the sides of the petals, or the side of the center, actually, you know what? I'm gonna follow my own directions. In my own directions, no, no, I'm gonna stick with this. We're gonna go, we're not gonna pay attention to the numbers on here. We're gonna do the sides next. So we're gonna come up and do wiggly, skinny butterfly wings. They also might look like big green beans, but notice, I'm just making wiggly squiggles. They don't have to be perfect at all. Nice and big up along the sides. Then we're gonna do the part in the back. So about halfway up this wiggly squiggle and halfway up this wiggly squiggle, we're gonna do another one, almost like a wiggly squiggled rainbow right across the top. So I'm gonna come up. You can even kinda of turn your oil pastel like this as you're drawing to get some of those cool squiggly lines. Now let's do the bottom, this little section right here. Cause in Georgia O'Keeffe's Poppy, she shows that the petals folded out from the center. So to do that, we're gonna make a squiggly frown. We're gonna do a frown right there. And then we're gonna just do a squiggle underneath it, just a bumpy squiggle underneath it. We're gonna do just two more petals on our poppy. We're gonna do a great big one that starts in the top of our rainbow and squiggles its way up and around and it's gonna come under our frown and come back up like a big giant wiggly C. And it's okay if you go off of your paper or go right up to the edge of your paper on this one, up and around and back down. And then let's do the same thing on this side. We're gonna come make a backwards wiggly C. So we're gonna come up and around and underneath that frown and back up like this. 
So you could start it anywhere you want it on that rainbow. I'm going to start it right about here. And again, I'm kind of rolling. See how I'm kind of rolling my uh, pastel? It gives me even cooler wiggles. We have just drawn the basic shape of our poppy. Let's put our red down for just a minute. We're going to do a couple more things in our drawing stage, and then we're going to color them in. In Georgia O'Keeffe's painting, she had just a tiny, tiny little bit of the stem that holds up the poppy. So we're going to do the same thing. Just two little lines down that show where our poppy went, or where our poppy was growing. And while we have the green in with us, let's just go ahead and kind of color that in. Then in the middle, remember how at the inside of poppies, there are like little flowers inside the bigger flower? We're gonna do a little yellow flower inside the center of our flower. So with our yellow pastel, you can just do any kind of little, it's almost like a little star. I'm just making some nice dark petals right in the middle, right there. Okay. Now we're gonna take, you might be wondering, why aren't we coloring that black yet? We're gonna save the black for the very end because with oil pastels, if you put black on your paper and then one of your other pastels accidentally hits that black, it drags the black into other parts of the painting and sometimes can look a little bit muddy. So we're gonna save the black for the center and we're gonna re-outline everything in black at the end, okay? So now we're gonna just have fun scribbling with our red and our orange. We're not gonna just scribble scrabble though. If you remember, the wrinkles on the poppy kind of radiated out like fireworks from the center. So we're gonna use our oil pastels to do the same. So we're gonna just come in, we're not gonna color it in, we're just gonna come in and starting at the center of our poppy, we're just gonna make some scribbles coming out like this. So kind of like, big fireworks exploding out of the middle. Anywhere where a new petal emerges from another one, you can add some of these explosive lines and marks. They're just kind of like stripes going out like fireworks on our poppy. They don't have to be perfect, just kind of make them a little bit fun. Okay, when we're done with our orange, or with our red, we're gonna come back and do the same thing with some orange. Let's do a few little firework lines with your orange because poppies have this um, really beautiful quality where when the sun shines through them, they look orange and red and sometimes a little bit of pink. So I'm just adding some orange fireworks here. And then I'm also going to come up and I'm going to do a little bit of orange. It doesn't have to be everywhere, but just a little bit around the edges. Just a little bit of orange with my oil pastel. Okay. You'll add a little bit of orange around this edge and a little bit of orange around this edge and a little bit of orange around that edge. It's really starting to take shape, isn't it? Now the last thing we're gonna do is, actually we're gonna save the black even for later. We're gonna go ahead now and take our marker. And remember how our markers have the skinny point or the broad edge. We're gonna use these great big broad edges and we're gonna do the same thing with our markers that we did with our oil pastels. But we're gonna fill in, again, same kind of stripes, but just using the side of our markers, big explosive stripes all over, all over our poppy. We'll use, we'll do this with red 
And then in just a minute, we're gonna do it with orange too. We're gonna do that same thing where we traced around the edge a little bit with our pastel. We're gonna do the same thing with marker. This kind of looks crazy and messy right now, but trust me, it's gonna look awesome. Come back here and I'm gonna keep filling in. We're not gonna, we're not coloring in, right? We still see lots of white, but I'm gonna outline a little bit. Maybe just make a few of these explosive stripes. Outline just a little bit, get some orange in some of these places. It looks like my little frown over here needs a lot of extra color. Okay. So now you probably have a little bit of a scribbly looking poppy that looks pretty cool on its own. But now we're gonna go back and we're gonna add the black. We take our black now, if yours is like mine, mine needs to be peeled back just a little bit so that I have access to some of the color. And I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna trace the lines that I did from the beginning. But I don't have, to, they don't have to be perfect. I'm rolling my pastel again as I draw, kind of rolling it back and forth in my fingers. And that gives me that neat, wiggly, wrinkly, the word would be, there's kind of a fancy word, crepey look to the petals. So I'm bringing it around again. And all of those same, remember when we did our, our frown here? I'm tracing over that. So it might be kind of hard to see. So you might remember, okay, we did the snow cone and then we did the butterfly wings and then we did the rainbow and then we did the frown and then we did these sides. It might've been helpful if I had gone and done that in the same order. So whatever helps you, we're just gonna wiggle, 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 wiggle it around. And I'm gonna trace the outside of my stem too. Now we're gonna color our inside. I'm gonna trace around my flower here. It's okay if you, like there's a little bit of white and that's okay. I'm just kind of making a new little flower there. And then I'm gonna fill this in. And I'm gonna fill it in by making lots of little circles because that kind of helps us to feel the texture. Texture is how something feels or how something looks like it feels. I'm gonna do the texture of my center of my poppy. And you can go over this as many times as you want. We want this to be pretty dark with not a lot of white space. So I'm gonna just keep on coloring. Even if sometimes I get a little bit into my flower, that's okay. All right. Now, one last step before we make some magic. I'm gonna take our blue marker. You see this here? The way that I made this really cool watercolor looking background is I just did a line of blue around the outside of my paper. And then when we add water, we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna take my blue, and you don't have to go all the way to the edge of your paper. Um, I have a piece of scratch paper underneath mine, and so if I go underneath it, it's just gonna get on there. I don't want you to get marker on your table or on your desk. So you can just come close to the edge. And I always like to, I like to keep the, um, I like to pull the marker towards me. So I will turn my paper make it a little bit easier. I'm gonna stop at that stem right there, jump over the speed bump, come back this way. And remember, I'm using the broad side of my marker again to get that nice thick blue line. And if you come 
to a place like this, like I did, where the flower goes all the way to the edge, just jump over it, pick it up on the other side. Turn this back this way, just a little bit there. Okay, now we're ready for the magic. Make sure you've clicked your lids back on your markers. Feel free to put your oil pastels away if you want. And then get yourself a cup of a cup or a jar of water and your paintbrush. And we're going to start by painting our petals. Very gently, I'm just going to start painting right on top of everything that I did. And as I do, that marker is going to get wet. And when the marker gets wet, it turns into paint. Notice that I'm not scrubbing, 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 scrubbing on my petals. I'm drawing, I'm pulling lines of paint across the petals in the same way that we did those firework lines and I'm painting right over the top of them. And as I do this, my marker is turning into paint. Look at that. So look at that petal. Now look at that compared to those. Doesn't that look like the crinkly wrinkled poppy petal that we saw in the pictures? Well, let's do this for all of our petals and let's do it one petal at a time. Don't just scrub it over, but let's gently imagine observing a poppy close up, really paying attention to each little petal. I'll play some music for us and we can paint our petals together. What I don't want you to do is don't paint outs, don't paint the outline yet. We're gonna just focus on our petals and then we'll come back and do the outline. Is your poppy looking like it's coming alive? I just think it's so fun to watch that marker turn right into paint. Now let's do our last step. But before we do, just take a look at your poppy and see if you have any white showing through. I'm gonna just 
go back and touch mine up in a few places where I didn't spread my paint out. You don't have to do that. It, some of them look really neat with some white. We just want most of it to be full of fun color. All right, now let's do our background. To do our background, we're gonna start by painting right on top of the blue and then pulling it toward our flower. And trying to stay off of the flower just so we don't get blue on there. But if you do, it's no big deal. See how we're gonna get that wet? So it's like we're activating the paint and then we're gonna pull it right up, right up around the edge of our flower. Doesn't that look cool? Now you know that I like to turn my paper instead of turning my hand. So I'm gonna come this way and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna paint right on top of my marker and pull it right up toward. Now when I start getting that kind of look there, that's when I know I need a little bit more water. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my blue and pull it right up next to my flower. This side is really skinny, so I don't need to put much water here. Isn't it fun to be able to make paint when we don't, when we're not using paint? I think it's really fun to try to use our art supplies in new and exciting ways. If you want to use marker like paint, you can go back and look at when we made snowflakes together way, way, way back in the fall. We used marker as paint there too, and that was, we used it in kind of a different way. That was fun. Last little segment. I love the way that the orange red poppy stands out on that blue background. Well, that was fun. Here's my finished piece. I sure wish that I could see yours. You know what's cool about this project is you don't have to stop at poppies. You could go out in your yard or go for a walk in your neighborhood, or go to a local park and pretend that you're Georgia O'Keeffe. Squat down, look closely at the flowers, not just at the outside, but put on your investigative hat and look at the insides. What colors do you see? What shapes do you see? Is there a surprising little flower inside of the big flower? I realized when I was thinking about this project, that I had a painting that I had done a while ago that was kind of like what George O'Keefe did. I painted some tulips. It's kind of in a plastic bag, so it's a little bit harder to see. But I painted that really, really interesting inside. The outside was pink. And I might just say, oh, that's a pink tulip. But then when I looked inside, there was a little yellow flower with some green and some black. So maybe as you explore your neighborhood, you're going to discover all sorts of fascinating flowers. And you can come home and pretend like you're Georgia O'Keeffe still and draw them big. You could use the same technique that we did today using crayon and marker like paint, or you could sketch them in pencil, draw them in Sharpie, use colored pencil or crayon or watercolors, whatever you want. But I hope that you have fun when you do, because I know I have so much fun with you when we get to draw together, even when we're apart. <laughs>